Florida State got a huge win on Saturday night against the Florida Gators with a ton of recruits there in attendance watching. And we're going to talk about some of those recruits and some of the head-to-head -head battles that Florida State is looking to win against the Gators here in this 2024 class. Florida State has the number three ranked recruiting class in the country. They're looking to add a few more pieces to finish it off, maybe elevate that up to number two. I don't know if they can catch Georgia and get to number one, but we'll see. It could be close there. They need to do some pretty ridiculous things to get up that high. Maybe hope for a couple of Georgia decommits or flips as well. But can they translate their success on the field against the Gators to also success in the recruiting class on the trail? There's several guys that they're going head-to-head -head for, a couple of commits, a couple of guys that are still uncommitted. I want to talk about each one of those and just kind of where I see that recruitment lining up, what to watch for, and what to potentially expect over the next few weeks as we get closer and closer to early signing day. We are less than a month away from early signing day. We're talking about all of these recruits over in our Discord daily so if you're not a member there, please go check that out. The link is in the description for the exclusive channels. You can sign up to be a Patreon for $3 a month. You can get access to exclusive info there. Okay, first up, LJ McCray. He's committed to the Gators right now. He committed in late October. And this is one that we had some folks on to talk with. They really said that they didn't think that LJ would be a, a potential flip candidate for wherever he committed to just because he was so intentional and he waited so long in the process and through the cycle to make that decision. However, he was at the game on uh, Saturday night watched Jared Verse absolutely go ham and be the best player on the field, maybe besides Trey Benson, uh, certainly the best defensive player on the field. Um, I think that has to bode well for the Seminoles. Now, he's saying all the right things, and he's saying he's locked in with the Gators, and that's exactly what you do say when you are committed. I know there are some family ties that are really, really important to LJ, and that has a pretty strong hold on him and why I think that he is committed to the Florida Gators right now. Um, I don't view this as a massive NIL battle where, you know, just he's going to take the highest bag and go there or anything like that. I think NIL is important. But when you're a top 10 recruit in the country, you're getting an NIL bag one way or the other. So I don't necessarily think that it's, oh, man, Florida State just needs to up the ante there uh, to pull him in. He was at the Miami game, again, said all the right things, said he was just going with his buddy Zay Mincy, who we'll talk about in just a minute. But then also at the Florida-Florida State game, I do think that being in that atmosphere, being in that environment is big, but I also think that Florida State did some things that can potentially sway him over to what they're doing. Now, LJ, again, a five-star defensive lineman, probably an edge prospect, could, could probably play literally anything he wanted, but I think he'll translate as an edge. Um, committed to the Gators, but visited against Miami, visited and saw you play when he visited Florida this weekend. And here's where I think the rubber meets the road. Can Florida State get him back for one more visit before early signing day? That weekend of December 8th is setting up to be a really, really big one. Jeremiah Smith, who we'll talk about in just a moment, is going to be there as well as a host of other guys. Can you get LJ in either that weekend or the next weekend where you are going to have some other guys in as well? Can you get him there and potentially work on flipping him? If Florida State can get him on campus one more time, especially if it's one of those last two weekends, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to get him that last weekend if possible because then you would guarantee yourself the last visit. Early signing day is just a few days later. But if Florida State can get him to campus one more time, I think they have a real shot at pulling this flip off. If they're not able to get him on campus, if Florida is able to play pretty good defense on this, which we know they weren't on the field at all, but if they can play good defense recruiting-wise and keep him away from Tallahassee, I think he'll stick with the Gators. Now, what about his teammate, Zay Mincy? I think Florida State's in a really good position here. I also think that Alabama and Miami are probably your next two that are in really good position. I think Florida might have even kind of fallen out of this a little bit based on some intel that I'm getting. I don't necessarily know that they're out or he's removed them, but it would it would surprise me right now if Florida beat out Alabama, Florida State, Miami uh, for Zay Mincy. I also think that Florida State loves Zay Mincy. They think he's a phenomenal prospect. Right now, I think they're in a really good position with Kai Bates. We've spoken about Kai just a little bit, and he's gotten some rejections and predictions to land in Florida State's class, but I think they take Mincy too. I think Mincy's on the top of their DB board right now and I don't think that they're a package deal I don't think that LJ and Zay are like one commits and you definitely get the other one but I do believe 
that if Florida State was able to land Zay Mincy, it would put them, again, in a little bit better position with LJ as well. I don't think it would be a done deal. I don't think it would seal the deal, anything like that. But it would be just an extra chip that they would have to try and pull the top defensive lineman in the state. But even if they're not able to pull LJ, they love Zay. Like They're, they're not using Zay as like a, a means to an end. Like They think he would be phenomenal. He is a great, great prospect, defensive back out of Daytona Mainland High School. Really, really love what he brings, what he offers, and Florida State would take him in a heartbeat, even if it didn't mean that they were just going to all of a sudden going to automatically pick up LJ McCray. Zay Mincy's one to watch as well. How does he spend his December? Is he coming back to campus? Is he going to make it one more time? That will be really, really big. We'll kind of see as we get a little closer to these last three or four weeks of recruiting for this early signing period. Jeremiah Smith, the number one player in the country, five-star wide receiver out of South Florida. There's all kind of talk here. There's all kind of buzz here. There's all kind of smoke here. Uh, Jeremiah has been committed to the Buckeyes for a long time. I've I've heard some smoke about Brian Hartline and a couple of these open jobs that are open. Um, I think the Knowles are in a good spot for Jeremiah Smith one way or the other. It would not shock me if they were able to flip his commitment at some point. I don't know if... um, Heartline takes another job or not, if, if the conversations around him are super serious leaving, I think the Knowles could potentially get him one way or the other. Now, he was at Florida this weekend, too, and got to watch their wide receivers just do absolutely nothing. Um, I thought that was good. I thought it was good that he watched Florida State again, watched them play well. He said all the right things coming out of that Florida um you know, visit. I I think that, you know, he's smart. He knows that he can't overplay his hand, but I think it's massive that the Knowles are getting him back on campus on that December 8th weekend for his official visit. He said that he's not taking any other visits in the month of December. They also very well may get him around campus or actually on campus because of where the game is played the very next weekend on December 15th, because He could be playing in the state championship game. If he comes to tally on December 8th and December 15th for his state championship game, you know he's going to get some time to interact with the coaches. You know he's going to get some time to really have that face time. I think the Knowles end up flipping his commitment. If both those visits hold, if everything goes the way you think it does, I think that'd be really, really strong. Now, he was in Gainesville this weekend, said some okay things about the Gators, nothing really consequential, nothing that you would say like, oh, wow, well, you know, this is this is something that's like earth shattering. But if, if the Gators were able to get him back on campus over this next month, over these next three or four weeks, I think that'd be big for them. I don't necessarily expect it, but you are still going head to head with them. And he's going to have taken two visits in the last month of recruiting, one to the Gators, one to the Knowles. Does Ohio State hold on? Are the Gators able to make a play? Does Florida State get to flip? I think this is another one that you're going head-to-head with UF for. I think it's a good thing that he was just in the swamp and watched you beat them by two scores, and hopefully that kind of pays off uh, at the end of the cycle, at the end of this early signing period with Jeremiah Smith. Aaron Childs is a linebacker that's currently committed to the Gators, and there's been a little bit of smoke here um, committed to the Gators, but Zach Blostein of Knowles 247 reported that if Florida State won the game on Saturday, it might go a long way in helping them set up a visit with Childs. And if Childs visits in December, uh, Florida's class is being held together by paper clips and some used bubble gum at this point and a whole lot of NIL funds. If Florida State was able to get him on a visit and get him to Tallahassee, I'd really like their chances of pulling off a flip. Now, I think Florida will play, again, doesn't happen on the field, but I think they'll play really good defense, a really strong defense to try and keep guys from visiting. I think they'll do that with LJ. I think they'll do that with Childs. I think they'll do that with, they'll try and do that with their other commits. I, you know, Lagway, Phil Simi, other guys that are currently committed to this class and considering possible other destinations. But I think they're going to lose Amaris Williams to Ohio State soon. And I think Aaron Childs is kind of looking around right now. Does he end up pulling the trigger? Does he end up visiting Tallahassee or anywhere else? If so, and the Knowles are able to get him on campus, you have to really, really like their chances just based on what he's just watched happen. Florida's linebackers were absolutely god-awful this year. I think Florida's going to have some turnover from a coach staff perspective. I don't think that their linebackers coach has been very good at you know relationships, at coaching, at development. 
their product on the field was pretty bad too. Meanwhile, you compare and contrast that with Kalen Deloach, who really should be getting consideration for ACC Defensive Player of the Year. I know the NC State kid will win it, but Kalen should finish second or third in that. Tatum's been great, and DJ Lundy has been really, really good as well. If they can get Childs on campus, I really like their chances of pulling off the flip. I think the first step was beating Florida. Now, if you can get him to campus, let's see what goes down there. And then lastly, our good friend Charles Lester. Now, this is an interesting one. Why am I bringing him up? Well, that's because Florida really, really thought that they had a chance to pull a flip here. There were all kind of tweets from when he visited there uh, earlier in the year as to Charles Lester potentially flipping. They said they were going to get him back on campus for the Florida-Florida State game, which happened this weekend. They said they'd also get him in for an official visit in December. Well, guess what? They went 0 for 2 there. He is not visiting in December, and he did not visit this weekend. Although I would have been fine with him doing so. I think he might have caused a little bit of a stir because I bet he would have worn FSU stuff. But either way, he wasn't there. He didn't visit. He's not visiting in December. He is shut down. He's locked in. And Mike Stuff's Billy Napier in a locker. Corey Raymond cannot pull off anything special against one of Pat Sartan's commits. I think this is big for a couple of reasons. One, you don't want to lose commits to your biggest rival. Florida State played incredible defense. Shout out Adam Fuller, whose defense did play great on the field this regular season. But I think Florida State played really good defense here in keeping him from visiting again. I think they were aware that he went and visited earlier in the year. They knew that was happening. They were okay with it. Kids like to go visit and see different things, make sure that they're 100% sure on what they're doing for their future. But Florida State shut that down and said, like, no, man, you're, you're committed with us. Like, let's roll. And he respected that, and he did not visit again. He didn't visit again this weekend. Didn't Not going to visit in December, as far as I'm aware of. I, I don't expect him to, uh, you know, go back on that. He said that he's locked in. He said that he's not doing anything else. So I'm glad that we were able to shut them down on this, too. Does Florida State end up going five for five on these head-to-heads with the Gators? Probably not. I mean, they're already one for uh, one with Lester. But if they could get two more, if they could pull off one flip, whether it be Aaron or LJ and maybe one of the uncommitted guys in either Zay Mincy or Jeremiah Smith, I think that'd be really, really special. I don't think Jeremiah Smith's going to sign with Florida one way or the other. And then, you know, Aaron Childs, if you're able to flip him, you might leave Florida with just one guy, and that'd be LJ McCray. I don't think Mincy goes there um, as much as I think that Florida's kind of been uh, in the driver's seat. On three has them at well over 50% to land him, and so they've got a better chance than the rest of the field combined. But I, I think you could really do a lot of damage to, to UF. They're going to drop some guys anyway. There's all kind of rumors swirling around Phil Simi. I don't know if Elko has any kind of relationship with Lagway, but that is the hometown team there. We'll see what goes down if, if that hire ends up going through. It seems like it is at this point with Texas A&M. But, man, if they lose Amaris Williams to Ohio State and they lose Childs or LJ or don't pick up Mincy or don't pick up Smith, man, that, that class is going to be in for a world of hurt. Right now, I think they're in the number five or six class. I think they would fall out of the top ten and maybe even be around like 12 or 13 at that point. Um you love to see it, right? Florida State beat Florida in a game that they didn't necessarily play their best, but they still won by two scores in the swamp. They covered the spread, and they dominated the second half, and that is going to translate. You're going to see some of these recruiting names, some of these recruiting targets are going to end up at Florida State. I like my odds to go at least three for five here. Um you know, I'm cheating a little bit, having Lester in there, but I like Florida State's odds to pick up one or two more of these guys and, you know, leave Florida with maybe one or two. So I think you win the battle there as well. I think that you want to stay ahead of Florida. You're already ahead of them from a roster standpoint. You want to continue that and by out recruiting them this year, taking advantage of a 12 and 0 season, possibly 13 and 0. We'll see what happens against Louisville this weekend. And Florida, for the third time in a row, third year in a row, finished under 500. Could not make a bowl this year. Um, you, you love to see it, right? Like you, you need to capitalize when when they, when your rivals down, when your opponents are down. You're going to out recruit Florida. You're going to out recruit Miami this year. And so again, the, the narratives around Mike not being able to recruit, you know, are slowly dying. The narratives around Mike not being able to coach are are certainly dying. That was even the dumber one that I never really understood, but. Uh, it's great to see kind of what Florida State's doing, what they're putting together. Make sure that you're supporting the battle's end. If you do want to land guys like this, it it certainly does help. We can call a spade a spade. We know what recruiting is these days. If you like getting five stars, if you like having a chance to flip LJ McCray, Jeremiah Smith, and others, make sure that you're signed up and supporting the battle's end. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. 
Make sure that you are subscribed with the channel. We've got a lot more stuff coming on ACC Championship Week. Again, if you haven't got your tickets for Charlotte yet, they are going fast. While I'm recording this, I've got like four emails of people buying tickets. You need to go get them because they're not going to last very long. Limited space this weekend, but we are going to have a blast up in Charlotte. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Go Knowles.